Thank you, Ron. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, I'm Abhi Zaltekin. I'm a data veteran. Started many years ago, that is 30 plus years at Sybase. Then I was the first field guy at Informatica. I'm sure most of you heard of the company. So build that business, went public. But since I've been in the data side, working with data, and of course, in the age of data-driven healthcare, or at least what the vision is, uh, now I'm with a new technology provider. And again, innovation is my focus. And this time, the focus is data security. So with that said, uh, if I were to maybe start at a very high level, we work with different kinds of comp companies, especially in the healthcare space. Well, healthcare is definitely dominant. Financial services is dominant. And next to that, of course, we have a number of customers that are managing sensitive data. That sensitive data could be PII, PHI, PCI, but small to large. Some of them are in a very rapid growth path, like you see uh, on this one. Uh, we exceeded $100 million uh, while we are exceeding these revenues with a high speed. Anybody can run a SQL query, get millions of email addresses. On the other hand, we have customers basically more established, but migrating their data to the cloud. In the old world, maybe they use their oracles or DB2s or Netezas or Teradatas. Now they are going more towards snowflakes, redshifts, or data breaks, or snaps, and likes basically taking advantage of the cloud journey and simplification that is proposed with the cloud. So with that said, when we talk about the journey and kind of assess very briefly, I mean, different segments, whether it's a, a plan provider, pharmacies, life sciences, payers, and there's a lot of data changing hands. That's the reality. Everybody is trying to basically take advantage of that data. Different pro providers are playing different roles, but the core is basically at the end, taking advantage of the data to improve services, to improve deliverables, and to take uh, better care of patients, basically, uh, while leveraging that data. So if you look at it, the operational systems typically feed what we call, what we learn as data lakes, data warehouses, operational data stores, or other databases, where the goal is more than anything else, analyzing the data, machine learning, data science, reporting, analytic users, they all come in into the picture and trying to access the data. And of course, now when you look at the data, if you are considering flow of data is the critical element. Uh, and if you, if you also consider in that junction to enable the flow, considering security, considering compliance requirements, well, one is to basically implement access to, to that data carefully. So with that said, I mean, recent 451 research outcome, and uh, that outcome highlights in that journey to become more data-driven, inadequate data security controls has been a key blocker. And why is that key blocker? On one side, if those controls are not in place or not implemented, the risk is increasing. Uh, you heard uh, different challenges, bad actors all the way going to maybe breach risks, someone trying to penetrate from outside, stealing that identification, stealing the credentials. On the other side, compliance. I mean, it becomes a big issue to enable the flow of data and getting that data into right hands. And eventually, it brings productivity into a grinding halt if the data is not flowing, if the data is not available. So now, what happened in the industry, if you look at the past couple of decades, this time maybe Gartner involved in providing this visibility, but if you look at, if you go back, I mean, I built these data warehouses all the way in 1996 with Informatica, right? In early 2000s, different types of data security products start emerging. Well, database activity monitoring was the topic. Audit products, data product protection products emerged. On top of that, uh, policy management products emerged. But if you look at last several years, an amalgamation, a convergence is taking place. The convergence is more than anything else. 
to provide comprehensive set of capabilities from a single platform when it comes to data access and authorization management. So with that said, of course, unless companies pick the battlefields, what to prioritize, what to implement, still can get complex because a hey, ball in the ocean typically slows down the projects, as we all know. So now, what do we do in this domain? Again, talking about, it, uh, talking about this amalgamation and convergence, we fit basically into this last box, a data security platform that's geared towards enabling data security and fine grain authorizations. The approach we choose, it's very unique and powerful because once again, if you're trying to uh, attack the problem without picking up the battlefield, all of a sudden you can have in a lengthy project, we heard this from our customers multiple times, implementing authorizations, identifying where is my data located, how do I classify it, how do I tag it, what type of policies and how do I develop those policies, local sta state level controls, federal controls, HIPAAs and likes, all of a sudden very complex problem. So with that said, our approach uh, to the problem in fact, what we believe the most efficient, most practical way to protect the data when we are providing access controls is point of access. So why point of access? On one side, you have the context. Context about the user, context about what they are trying to do with data, context about what they are trying to access, one. Second point, you can basically apply most controls in that journey. You can approve access, deny access. You can basically invoke policies, enforce policies, mask the data, anonymize the data. So many control opportunities are in your head. And finally, no need to plan. Again, when that access is taking place, you don't have to co co generate replicas of the data that are catering to different audiences. You don't have to create views. So if everything is taking place, decoupled from that data store or data stores that are making up your data lake and data warehouse infrastructure, now you have a service layer that is decoupled that's enabling you basically manage these controls. So now let me shift the gear and talk about what that solution is very briefly. As I mentioned, uh, it's a data security solution. And the beauty of how we architected it decoupled from the data. So you don't have to change the data infrastructure. Decoupled from the BI tools, reporting applications, so you don't have to change the user experience. And if you look at a very high level, what it brings to the table, I mean, first, you need to automate the identification and discovery, right? What is the data footprint? Where is that sensitive data located? How is that sensitive data tagged? We take care of it. Taking advantage of that classification, now the next step would be enabling defining policies. That policy is more permissive, less permissive, but the core idea, it takes advantage of the automated classification. By the way, in the journey we have seen, we see customers taking advantage of data catalogs as well, no problem. You can take advantage of the integration, maybe Colibra or maybe Alation or Likes to bring that classification but more importantly, data structures are not static in most cases. New tables, new fields, new data stores keep coming, but the approach we bring to the table enables basically automation to identify what's being added. And to a large extent, with such addition, enables also a fire and forget type of uh, approach. What I mean by that, the policies you develop and define as soon as you register a data store, it's applicable. Comprehensively enforced, no matter what, since you have a single access point to the data. Hey, you may wonder, hey, isn't that basically creating a performance issue? Well, we took advantage of our Kubernetes architecture. Such Kubernetes architecture, once again, enables us to scale up and support evolving, increasing requirements as well. So in that journey upon policy development, just-in-time access is becoming a big deal in the market. And maybe someone who needs access to that data, engaging with the data stewardship, thus uh, we are also enabling delegation. Such data stewards can interact with those who are trying to gain access. 
and very quickly take care of the access needs. And in that journey, hey, some of you have, may have heard about role-based access or attribute-based access. All of these controls can be enabled. And finally, audit piece, right? Big part of the value proposition, we basically consolidate audit by providing you continuous visibility. So if you need the compliance reports on where is that data, who's accessing, what access is being given to whom, now everything is basically consistently available. So if I look at it, I mean, at a very high level, key capabilities of the product, starting with assessing the posture to help you to identify the data footprint, tag and classify, maintain that audit visibility, access manager, which is enabling you to define access. So if I'm coming in, if you're coming in, if Joe is coming in, and Mike is coming in with different needs, different requirements, different roles, well, based on the roles, identity of our solution, that's taking advantage of the integration, maybe with your SSO or single sign-on, taking advantage of the data attributes and applying, enforcing the controls upon need. And then, of course, look, you, when you come to a restaurant, you need a menu, right, to see what, what options are available. And we offer that too. Anything that's registered in the domain for a new employee, for an existing employee, now you have the menu of data, what is available to you and what you may need to basically request access, maybe a next level authorization. But the core idea is complete automation and one location. So very quickly, I mean, to wrap up, I mean, Innovacer has been a, one of our early Caltech customers. And of course, in their case, their end users are banners and the big uh, providers uh, like Banner, Banner Health and likes. But with that, when they are committing, when they are working with a company like Innovacer, they're exploring, they're looking for the assurances on compliance side, on the security side, security side, privacy side. And the core idea here is basically providing the analytics uh, on the treatment, providing the analytics uh, on the subscriber, uh, but the data infrastructure is fragmented, right? Catering to different needs, different customers. Uh, you have basically combination of snowflakes and mongos or redshift and elastics. In that junction, in order to manage access and in order to provide the assurances that the data the provider is delivering to Innovacer for them to provide analytics, eh, that's what we are taking care of. So basically, diverse audiences, whether it's engineering, reporting, machine learning community, or even support resources are basically subject to uh, policy enforcement and subject to controls that are applied. And the beauty, anytime any access is taking place, uh, Sator is basically providing that consistent perspective, audit capabilities uh, to deliver those assurances from any way sir, to their uh, clients, basically. And Arun uh, is our sponsor, head of engineering. And for them, our ability to deploy the solution very quickly without changing the data infrastructure, which is a complex data infrastructure, and without changing the user experience is a big deal. So what we are saying, hey, in 2023, it's time to take advantage of automation and innovation. And in our case, we bring that innovation and automation to the table for security. And again, we have now, we are in the early stages of our progress, a huge growth. Uh, with that said, we are confident of what we bring to the table. Uh, if you take a note of this, of course, the presentation will be available. You can even see this on the Satori website. And we developed a test drive. It gives everyone the opportunity to get their kind of toes wet and uh, initiate the process, the process of curiosity, how this is enabled and how we are protecting the data, how we are enabling these fine-grained authorizations to make sure we can support the vision of data-driven healthcare.